Alhamdulillahi Alhamdulillah, we continue going over the hadith of Jibreel. We have reached the portion of the hadith where Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said, Akhbarani an al ihsan. He said, and inform me about al ihsan. To which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained, that ihsan and ta'budullaha ka'annaka tarah fa'in lam takun tarah fa'innahu yarak he said is to worship Allah as if you see him and if and since you don't see him then it is knowing that he sees you naam faqala al-allama fadilat al-shaykh shaykh salih al-fawzan والإحسان هو مرتبة العليا. He says that إحسان is a very high level. إحسان is a very high level. It is a level that we all should be striving to attain. And إحسان you will find is only one pillar, and that is as mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to worship Allah as if you see Him, and if you do not see Him, then know that He sees you. However, Ihsan it breaks into two parts, as Sheikh Saleh Abd Aziz and Sheikh Hafizahullah Taala he explains that Ihsan it breaks into two parts. The first part of it that is mentioned here in the hadith is called al-mushahada 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 is to worship Allah as if you see him this is what's called al-mushahada naam and this is the highest of the two levels al-mushahada it is the highest of the two levels of al-ihsan the second level is called المراقبة المراقبة والمراقبة is to know that Allah is watching you to know that Allah sees you so you'll find that individual, an individual who is constantly aware of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him He's constantly aware of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows what He is doing, He hears what He is saying, and so on and so forth. Then you will find He will reach a level of perfection and completeness with regards to His deeds that other than Him won't reach. However, as we explain, this level of muraqaba, it is the lower of the two levels. The highest of them is the first one mentioned, al mushahada. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him. The Fadilat al-Shaykh al-Allama, he goes on and he says, وَالْمَعْنَ الْإِحْسَانِ And the meaning of al-Ihsan, it's qanu shay wa itmamuhu. It means to perfect something or to do something extremely well and to perfect it. To perfect it. Naam. To do something extremely well and to perfect it. Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Sajda, الَّذِي أَحْسَنَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَهُ The one who has made good everything that He created. Meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala, the one who made everything that He created in a yani, good manner, in a good... Yeah? إِذَنْ وَالْإِحْسَانُ الْعَمَلُ إحسان العمل to have إحسان in an action إتمامه وإتقانه is means to perfect an action or to can 
or to yani, uh, do it in a most excellent manner to perfect an action or to do it in a most excellent manner ihsanu sun'a itmamuha wa itqanuha na'am wa lihadha yaqulun and for this fact they say anta tuhsinu kadha aw la tuhsin and for this reason because ihsan means to do something in a most excellent and a perfect manner to do to to do a function in the most excellent and perfect manner and the like for that reason it is said that verily you have tuhsinu kadha you have brought the ihsan with kadha you have done such and such in a most excellent of manners uh, or it will be said the lack thereof or it will be said la tuhsinu you didn't do that in the best way you didn't do that in the most excellent of manners and the like ala kullin yani hal ta'rifu hadha shay tamaman aw annaka la ta'rifu he said meaning do you know this thing well or you don't know it do you know this well or you don't know it the shaykh he says fal ihsan yakun bayn al 'abd wa bayn ar rabbihi bi 'ibadati llah wahdahu la sharika lah ويكون الإحسان بين الناس بالصدقة والمعروف والبذل الخير والدعوة إلى الله تعالى والتعليم العلم النافع. He says an ihsan it can be between an individual, the slave and his lord, meaning that that slave he worships Allah سبحانه وتعالى alone and he does not associate any partners with him. He worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and he excels in that worship and that he does not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, an individual, he could illustrate ihsan between mankind, meaning that he treats mankind in a most excellent manner, meaning that he, yani by the giving of sadaqah or by yani, treating them in a good, most excellent way, being nice to them and kind to them and extending to them their rights in the most excellent way upon the way in which they command it, by making sure that good reaches them, by being a facilitator of good, by calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by teaching beneficial knowledge, so on and so forth. Now, Allah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala, He says, وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah Ta'ala, He says, and excel in doing good. For verily Allah loves those who excel in doing good. Naam. وَالْإِحْسَانُ الْعَمَلِ So therefore, ihsan also in actions and bringing forth the, the ibadah, that which is necessitated from ihsan therein, the shaykh goes on and he says, والإحسان بالعمل اتقانه بأن يكون على السنة. It means that you that is done in a most excellent manner, meaning that it complies and it is upon the Sunnah. That it complies with the Sunnah and is upon the Sunnah. نعم. So you find that it will be impossible to reach this level of إحسان inside the religion for مبتدئ. For a mutadir, it will be impossible for him to reach his level. Why? Because from ihsan means that you have to do the ibadah upon the sunnah. Your aqidah has to be in compliance, has to be in agreement with the sunnah. Your minhaj has to be in compliance, has to be in agreement with the sunnah. Your way has to be in, 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 in compliance, has to be in agreement with the sunnah. And if it is contrary to such, then you will not have brought the ihsan. If it's based upon bid'ah, you will not have brought the ihsan. If it's based upon that which contradicts the way of the salaf, you will not have brought the ihsan. It will be impossible. It will be impossible. Naam. So you see now, or do you further see the evil and ill repercussions of bid'ah is that it prohibits an individual from ever reaching this level of ihsan. He will be prohibited from the gate of ever reaching this level of ihsan. Because to do such, an individual has to be upon the sunnah. Has to be upon the sunnah. Naam. So if, if, if we want to be from the muhsinun, then we have to be upon the sunnah. We have to be upon the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If not, then it will be impossible.
Naam. The Shaykh goes on and he says, وَلَيْسَ فِيهِ بِدْعَى The action can't have no bid'ah in it. There's no bid'ah therein. فَإِذَا كَانَ فِيهِ فَإِذَا كَانَ فِي الْعَمَلِ بِدْعَةٌ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ إِحْسَانِ الْعَمَلِ And if there is inside of an action bid'ah, then there is no ihsan, there is no doing of an action in the most perfect of manners. Because bid'ah is the opposite of doing something in a perfect manner, but rather do something in the most despicable, in a most vile manner. Naam. So it can't have no bid'ah in it. Uh, Allah Ta'ala, He says, بَلْ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ Allah Ta'ala, He says, but rather the one who he submits his face to Allah and he is a muhsin. He is a muhsin. Inshallah Ta'ala, we're going to hold off on translating muhsin for right now. But I think you all kind of get the, get the point. وَقَالَ uh, النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the, the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ He said, مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ رَدٌ Whoever does an action that does not have on it our command is rejected. Rejected. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, And beware of newly invented matters. Because verily, every newly invented matter is a bid'ah. Is a bid'ah. Is an evil innovation. So therefore, let's go back now to the ihsan of the action. فَإِحْسَانُ الْعَمَلِ The ihsan of an action إِخْلَاصُهُ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ It is to do that action sincerely for Allah عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمُوَافَقَتُهُ لِلسُنَّةِ And the compliance and agreement of that action with the sunnah It has to be upon the sunnah uh, has to be upon the sunnah so now what if a person comes and he says, Ma huwa dalil? What should dalil for this? Because you, we always hear that everything has to have a dalil. Has to have dalil. You speak about Islam, have to give me dalil. Now, have to have a proof and the evidence. So what's the proof and the evidence that show that it has to have ikhlafs and it has to coincide with the sunnah? Now a person may say, how come it can't just be upon ikhlas? And, and, and what we all agree is good. How come it just can't be upon ikhlas and, 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 and what we think is okay? We tell him, nah, can't be like that. has to be upon sunnah. So he said, okay, what's your dalil? Our dalil, Allah Ta'ala statement, Bala man aslama wajahahu lillah wa huwa muhsin. Allah Ta'ala statement in Surah Al Baqarah, and it says verse 112, where Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he says what means. Rather, the one who submits his face to Allah. The one who submits his face to Allah. Submitting of one's face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is upon what? Upon ikhlas. Upon tawheed. Naam. So this is the proof for a tawheed. The proof for ikhlas. Submits his face to Allah. Wa huwa muhsin. And he is a muhsin. Ah. Uh, what is the meaning of muhsin? A, as the alama for al Sheikh Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan, he says that the meaning of muhsin A, muttabi'un lil-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says it means that they are following the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the muhsin. Who is the muhsin? The muhsin is the one who, are, who was upon the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The muhsin is the one who illustrates Ihsan. So in order to illustrate the Ihsan and to be upon the Ihsan and in the, in the action, then a person has to be upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And without being upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he will be prohibited from ever reaching the level of Ihsan. He will be prohibited from ever being called a Muhsin. He will never be a Muhsin if he's upon Bid'ah. So the Shaykh he says he has to be upon the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Sunnah upon the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وَلَمْ يَتَقَرَّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِالْبِدْعَ وَالْمُحْدَثَاتِ And not an individual who draws, who seeks to draw near to Allah by way of bid'ah 
and by way of innovative uh, uh, things. Now, he's an individual who does not seek to draw near to Allah by bid'ah nor by innovative things. Because the reality is that what? Is that bid'ah and innovative things, they do not draw an individual near to Allah, but rather they take an individual away from Allah. Now, bid'ah and innovative things, they do not bring a person near to Allah, but rather they draw, they take a person away from Allah Jalla wa'ala. Now, هذا هو الحق. على كل in this hadith, وفي هذا الحديث, الإحسان, going back to this hadith in particular, الإحسان here, then what we mean by it, what is meant by it, is as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained. والإحسان, أن تعبد الله كأنك, كأنك تراه. To worship Allah as if you see Him. Now remember we said worshiping Allah as if you see Him, this is called what? Al-Mushahada. Al-mu- al Worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Him is called Mushahada. Wahada huwa al-Ihsan bain al-Abdi wa bain al-Rabbihi and ta'abud Allah and ta'abud Allah muqinan bihi mu'minan bihi tamam al-Iman hatta ka'annaka tarahu bibasak min shiddat al-Iman the shaykh he says and this is the ihsan between the slave and between his lord that he worships his lord with certainty he worships his lord completely believing in him with the perfect faith so complete that is until the point that he worships Allah Ta'ala as if he sees him. Naam. It's to the point, as a shaykh is yani speaking in the second person here, is in the point until you worship Allah as if you see him with your eyes. If you see him with your eyes. This is how strong the, 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 the person's iman is. The shaykh he says, Min shiddatil iman. This is how strong his iman is. His iman is so strong that he worships Allah Jalla wa'ala as if he sees him. This is how strong his iman is. Now, this is a, a point, this is a stage that we all have to strive to get to. This is this is a, a, a goal that we should be living our lives striving to get to, right? I mean, you got people running around the globe and they're trying to get different things. Whether, you know, whether it be they're trying to get this degree or that degree, this, this certification, that certification. They're trying to get this amount of money, this car, this house, this neighborhood, whatever. Whatever people be looking for. Now, nah, whatever people look for. What the movement, what every movement should commonly be looking for, what every movement should commonly be striving for, is that they should be striving to reach this level of Iman. They should be striving to reach this level of Iman. Now, that, she, that they should be, that they should be striving to reach this level of Al Iman to the point where they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they see Him. Now, such a level will not, you won't come about it easy. You won't attain it easily. But rather it will take from you extreme effort. Now, extreme effort. And from those efforts that will be needed to reach such a level, right, they will include, but are not restricted to, the following. One, an individual will have to be a, of those who are seriously seeking knowledge, seriously studying. You have to learn how to properly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because without such, you will never reach this level. You will never reach this level upon ignorance. Never. The ignorant worshiper will never reach this level. Never. You can only reach this level based upon knowledge. You can only reach this level based upon knowledge. The level when a person truly fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only a result of, of ilm. It's not a result of jahl. It's a result of ilm. This is why Allah ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ 
min ibadihi al ulama then verily the only ones innama innama Allah ta'ala he says innama and then verily the only ones who truly fear Allah from his slaves are who the ulama the ulama they are the only ones who truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because their fear is what is based upon ilm based upon knowledge naam so that fear that is based upon knowledge is not rivaled by fear that's based upon ignorance when never can the fear based upon ignorance can never match it can never can, can never match it naam and that that So we need ilm. We need ilm. Now, once we have realized and we acknowledge that we need ilm, then we will acknowledge that we need an infrastructure by way in which will facilitate the seeking of knowledge. Right? We need an infrastructure by way in which will facilitate the seeking of knowledge. So you will see now how, for a lot of the Muslims in the West, in the majority. of the western communities their priorities are completely astray their priorities are completely off point because when you reflect now on what we need and then you reflect on the infrastructure or what do we have in our communities that will help us to achieve this then you will find what that we are extremely lacking we are extremely lacking naam we it would necessitate constant classes constant links with and from the ulama constant classes and links with and from the ulama where they teaching us going through books with us teaching us our religion teaching us the aqid naam teaching us our aqid so that we believe in Allah ta'ala correctly we believe in the angels correctly we believe in the books correctly we believe in the messengers correctly we believe in the last day correctly we believe in qadr correctly naam we need that and we know in order to reach the level to, to be muhsin to be muhsin we have to be upon sunnah So we need the ulama to teach us the fiqh of wudu so we make a wudu upon sunnah the fiqh of tayammum so we make a tayammum upon sunnah the fiqh of ghusl so we make a ghusl upon sunnah the fiqh of salah so we praying our prayer upon sunnah and so on and so forth now for the rest of the ibadah so on and so forth so that we doing everything upon sunnah but that will necessitate what serious classes now now of course we understand ma la yudrak kun la yutrak jul whatever you can't do all of it then you don't leave it all off either right whatever you can't do it all and we don't leave it all off okay but at the same time from time to time we have to just be real a class one time a week if that's all we can do cuz that's how pathetic we are then that's what we do but that's not enough it's not enough so let us not be fooled into thinking that it's enough So we puff our chest up and we feel good about ourselves now. I went to class one day. Alhamdulillah. Now I'm alhamdulillah. You're not going to argue with you on that. Alhamdulillah. But at the same time realize that it's still lacking. It's still lacking. Alhamdulillah you went. Cuz you got some people don't go. Some people ain't been in class in months. Some people ain't been in class in years. Naam. Some people ain't yeah, you have that. So alhamdulillah we're not knocking that. But at the same time we want you to know Don't get souped up by it neither. We're not going to knock it, but don't get souped up by it. It's not enough. It has to be more than that, more serious. Now, let's look to our children now. Let's look to our children, our little babies. Are we helping them into reaching these levels? This high level of Islam? Where is the school for the Quran? Now, where is it at? And we don't want it want you you know to say oh think oh you need all this brick and mortar and stuff like that forget all that stuff. We don't let that move say school we don't mean got to have a separate building so and so where are the circles inside the the masjid the masjid we already have where are the circles inside the masjid teaching the children the Quran. You see how we set up an infrastructure that is suitable for that where are the circles inside of the masjid teaching the 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 children about the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
about the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu about the characteristics of the Prophet Sallallahu Now, where, where is that? So is it any surprise now that our children know more about this basketball player, that football player, that baseball player, that hockey player, and that whoever, 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 they know more about them than they know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You see? SubhanAllah! Do we want to accept the fact that CNN is beating us and describing these, these, these professional ball chasers and puck hitters? They beating us and explaining more about them to our children? Then we just explain it about the best of mankind. This is a tragedy. Now, it's a tragedy, but we have no one to blame but ourselves. We have no one to blame but ourselves. But these are all things that are necessary to reach these levels. Where are the levels teaching our children how to pray? When they reach the age of seven, we're supposed to be teaching them how to pray. The ulama, they advise that when a child reaches seven years of age, you should start teaching him the explanation of uh, yani, the book by Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab about the, 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 the salah. Naam. The fiqh of going to the masjid. You should be teaching the children at seven. SubhanAllah, you got people 17, 27, 37, even 70. Don't even, don't even know nothing about this book. Don't know nothing about this book. Naam. But the children at seven, we should be going through this book with them, teaching them. Sufus Salat to Nabi. By the Alama, Al Imam, Al Bani, Rahimullah Ta'ala. Is this, go, are we going over this? Are we going through these ahadith and so on and so forth? Naam. This is a tragedy. So when our children don't know how to pray, when our children don't know how to make a wudu, when our children don't know how to do what they need to do uh, based upon the sunnah, it's our fault. It's our fault, ma'am. It's our fault. And the list go, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on from that which is needed, that which is necessary, ma'am. And, and, and we're not going to get there just by beautiful speech. We're not going to get there just by, you know, I call it like the, uh, what do you say? The nam concept, right? Or the Nam complex. And people just Nam you to death. You talk about good stuff. Yeah, brother, we need this, we need that. Nam. We right, we need that. We need we need kids to learn Quran. Nam, you right, we need that. We need to be going over the Sunnah teaching the hadith. Nam, we need that. Children be learning 40 hadith. Nam, sah. You right, I sent. Don't Nam me to death and then turn around and sit on your hands. Because that's what happened all the time, right? People Nam you to death. Nam, ach, Nam, 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 Nam. And then. What happened? That's it. You got a bunch of noms. You got like 20, 20 million noms, right? Out, out, out the conversation. And that's about it. After that, right back to what we was on yesterday. We, we, we reached the point you can't nom us to death no more because we're noming ourselves to death. Nom, 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 nom. 20 years gone by, 10 years gone by, we just noming ourselves to death. SubhanAllah. Nom, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. We have to pull forth action. Now, action means we have to pull forth action physically. We have to we have to be physically around to help out best we can help out. Even if it's just keeping an eye on the kids, yeah? even if it's just helping to facilitate and to orchestrate, even if it's coming open up the match and making sure it's accessible, so on and so forth. We need to do that. And and and, yeah, and those who, who who can help like that and can help financially, then we need people to come out of their pockets. Now nah, we need people to help out of their pockets. Who's gonna teach? Who's gonna teach? People look around and say, Oh, we have no love and animal in our community. Okay? That's how it is right now. 2012. Right? But you got teenagers in your community, right? You got kids going off to college in your community, right? Yeah. Talk to one of them. See if a few of them want to go study Islam. Right? Send them to go study Islam. Come up with some money every once a month and you send them money. You send them three, four, five hundred dollars a month. Take care of them. Send off more than one. So okay, 2012, okay, 2012, I mean, it is what it is, okay? But now, alhamdulillah, now we got four or five kids now studying this now. This one is in, these two in, in Egypt, this one, these, these three is in Saudi One in Mecca, in Muqura, the other one is in Medina, the other two is in Medina. Now, alhamdulillah, make sure you take care of all of them. Because why? They all may not come back. Somebody might die. Somebody might get married. 
Somebody might get a good job over there, opportunity. So we're going to tell them, no, come back to Atlanta Cove. Next stat, we've been paying you for the past 10 years, Joker, come back. No, we're going to tell them, stay. Let our best, stay. Alhamdulillah, I, I wish, you know, I want for you to own for myself. I wish I could be in that situation. I can't, so you stay, stay, stay. Let our best. That's why we sent five of y'all. Four come back then, let our best. Stay, don't come back. You can't come back. The money, let our best. We're going to be rewarded for it anyway. I ain't worried about that. Stay over there. Ma'am. But the other four now, okay, now 2022, inshallah. Now you got four people. You got four people because it takes more than just one. You know, some people, they got the mentality. You get one student the nonsense, sit. Then you treat them like a donkey. You work them to death, right? You get burned out. Yeah. Can't do it all. So you got to have multiple people. But it takes effort. It takes time. It takes planning. It takes seriousness. Why? We just doing this because just to be doing it? No. We doing this because we worried about bragging rights? Forget all that. Why are we doing it? Because we wanna we wanna be of a people who 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 reach help and to facilitate others in reaching this level of Iman and that requires ilm. That requires teachers. Having constant contact with the ulama requires individuals who can communicate with the ulama, who can literally speak their same language. Naam, who can literally speak the same language. So that means that what then we need people from amongst us who look, call the Sheikh. Here's some questions. Call call the Sheikh with the questions. When we're going over the class or what have you, Annie, you know, teach us what the Sheikh taught you. Teach us what you have learned. And then arrange what is classes, steady classes, so that we can hear from, from the Mashaykh as well. Every week we can hear from the Mashaykh. This is important, but it requires what? It requires multiple people. Because you may have one brother who is making the calls. You may have another brother from amongst them who's doing the translation. You may have another brother from amongst them who's just yeah, putting, the, putting the questions together. That's three people to make a concerted effort. You get a, you're going to get a better product like that. It's going to be more smooth. Now, it's going to be more smooth. Out of Kulin, it takes people. This brother might be the khatib. That brother might lead the salawat. This brother might teach fiqh. This brother might teach aqidah. That brother might teach Quran. You need multiple people. But all this is needed if we want to be serious about worshiping Allah Ta'ala the right way. We got to be serious about that. And we can't have it in our mind, oh, I'm going to wait till I go overseas. I'm going to tell you a secret right now. I'm going to tell everybody a secret right now. If you're lazy in the West, you're going to be lazy in the East. Point blank. If you're lazy in the West, you're going to be lazy in the East. Because that land ain't going to put no enthusiasm in a non-enthusiastic individual. Period. I don't care where you at. If you're lazy in Minnesota, you're going to be lazy in Mecca. Point blank. Point blank. If you're lazy in Colorado, you're going to be lazy in Cairo. Point blank. Ain't like now because, oh, you're in Cairo or something. Now I'm being, I'm being energetic now. No, you're still going to be the same joker that get up, pray Fajr, go home, sleep the Zohar, get up, pray Zohar, and then sit around twiddling his thumbs for the rest of the day talking about seeking knowledge. <laughs> you got a lot of cats like that. Talk about seeking knowledge, but ain't seeking knowledge. They just talking about studying, but ain't studying. Huh? A lot of people is like that. How many people we know like that? Talk about studying but don't study. Study. So my point is, if you're lazy in the West, you're going to be lazy in the East. So all that, I'm going to wait till I go overseas. No, you're not. You're going to go overseas and waste people money, waste your own money, waste your time. Because you ain't going to get nothing. You know how many people we've seen come and leave Egypt? Come come to Egypt with, on, on, you know, careful high level. Stay for a year or two, leave Egypt on careful high level. Serious. It was cats over there who are like professional book buyers. The library, biggest library out of all the students, because they spend all day inside the store. This is a true story. It was one brother, we used to see him day in and day out walking with like volumes of books. Volumes of books. Five, six books as he's, he's walking. You know, a day, you see him with him. Always in the bookstore. Could read a lick. Could read a lick. So much so that one of the, one of, one of the students of knowledge seen him. And he told him, I said, listen, please advise your brother. Please advise your brother. I said, what do you want to tell him? Tell your brother, stop spending so much time buying books and just spend half of that time reading books. And he'll probably be better than all y'all. <laughs> That's much time he should spend. But you get people like that. So my point is, is that we have to become serious from right now. Don't think a land, a land going to change it. Don't think in that 12-hour plane trip, you know what I'm saying, you're going to all of a sudden just be changed you know, as you go through the time zone. No, that's it now. I'm in study mode. 
All right, maybe for a day or two, then you go right back to being who you is. So the point is, you gotta start. We gotta start training ourselves from right now. Why? Because we want to reach these levels. This is not a game. We want to reach these levels, but it's not going to happen without knowledge. It's not going to happen without knowledge because we're not going to get to that level of knowledge as a community wide, uh, 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 you know, community wide level of of, of of aim like that unless we what? Unless we seriously study. Sheikh Muhammad Al Manajami said that every day after Fajr, every day after Fajr. In the area he was in, they used to teach the explanation of the Lafatul Usul every day after Fajr. He said that when they finished the book, that they started again. And that, that was just the staple. Finish the book, you started again. Finish the book, you started again. He said, so much so that you can grab anyone from the common person from there and ask them, yeah, what's the greatest thing that Allah Ta'ala commanded us with? And they'll tell you, a tawheed. What's the definition of a tawheed? They will tell you, you know, to worship Allah Ta'ala alone, and so on and so forth. Now, we have to put forth more effort. If we want to reach this level of of of, 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 uh, of Ihsan, this great level, we worship Allah times if we see him. Why? Because the strength of the Iman. The strength of the Iman. The Shaykh says, Because that what you see, you don't doubt in it. You don't doubt in it. Uh, the Shaykh says, When you see the wall, you don't doubt in it, right? Like that wall right there. You don't doubt in it. So somebody come running in from outside, right? Is he going to keep running straight to the wall? No, because he sees it. So he's going to stop because he has no doubt that the wall is there. He's not going to be like, is that a wall or not? I don't know. Maybe not. And keep running. He's not going to do that because he's going to realize that's a wall. Stop. Because he, he sees, he understands. He has no doubt in that. So likewise, that which you see, you have no doubt in. Now, the Sheikh he says, Oh, al Bab. Or if you see a door, you never doubt in it. Like if, if you brought 10, 10 out of people, 10 out of 10 people in here, you say, what's that right there? They're going to say it's a door. 10 out of 10. And they're going to say, how you know it's a door? What are they going to tell you? Because I see it. It's right there. It's a door. It's obvious. What else is it? It's a door. Right? It has hinges. It has a knob. It has a lock. It's a door. What else is it? What do you guys call it? They call it door. I just want to make sure. Right? It's a door. Why? Because you see it. The Sheikh, he says, he said, now Ihsan is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. As if you see him. As if you see him with your eyes. Why? Because of the strength of your iman. And the strength of your, your, of your yaqeen. Naam, this is the hot. This ain't no Sufi stuff. You understand? Because we're not saying you're going to see Allah. Ka'annaka tara. As if you see Him. As if you see Him. Why? Because as we're going to get into a little while, a little bit, a uh, few, few moments, we're not going to see Allah in this dunya. We know that. No one is going to see Allah in this dunya. We know that. Naam? So we know we're not going to see Allah now. Huh? But a person's level of iman reaches to such a high level that he worships Allah as if he sees him. As if he sees him. Not like what the Sufis say. Because some Sufis think they, they, they can see Allah. This is a lie. They're not seeing Allah. Ala kulli the shaykh he says, Wa illa fa inna Allah la yura fi hadihi dunya. He said, because, look, Allah is not, is not going to be seen in this dunya. Allah is not going to be seen in this dunya. Because the creation, Because the creation, they cannot handle seeing Allah in this dunya. Okay? The creation, us as, a, as, a, as a, the creation, we cannot handle. We don't have the ability. Literally, we have not been built like that. Literally, we have not been built like that. We are not able to see Allah in this dunya. The Shaykh says, but rather the believers only, the believers only will see Allah in Jannah. Why? Because Allah would have given them the strength that they will be able to see Him. That they will be able to see their Lord. You see, because when we get recreated, 
right? When we get resurrected and our bodies are reformed, refashioned, reshaped, and so on and so forth, and we're standing there, right? We will be what? For those who enter into the Jannah, and we ask Allah to, to make us from them, they will be stronger than what they are right now. They will be stronger than what they are right now. And I want you to contemplate over this fact. The things that exist in Jannah right now, think about this now. You can't handle them in your, in your current state, in your current, the way you created right now. You can't handle it. If you drank something, and every sip it kept getting better and better and better and better and better and better and better, and better right? Think about that now. I want you to seriously think about this. This is all in all seriousness. If you drink something, some mango juice, for example, and as you drink it, it kept getting better. First, first time you drank it was the best thing you ever had in your life. The second time it got better. And then it got better. And then it got better. And then it got better. Mentally, you wouldn't even be able to take that. You would go crazy. You go crazy. Right? Some people may even have a heart attack. Really, they physically can't take it. Mentally, they, they can't, they're not built for it. They be looking at the cup like they're like, like they're going, looking at the cup, take a sip, look at the cup. They go crazy. They keep getting better. Right? They might have a heart attack. We can't handle it. So this is what we understand. Now what? That for the mu'min who's entered into the Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to them the strength, what they need to handle the bliss of Jannah. We can't even handle the bliss of Jannah in our current state. We'll die. We'll die. No. So they will be created, we will, we will be any, recreated, the believers, in a way in which they'll be strong enough, they'll be given the strength by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to see Allah ta'ala in the next life. But in this dunya, no one has seen Allah with their eyes. But rather, He has been seen with the, with the heart. As we know, the Prophet sallam, he saw Allah with His heart. With His heart. Naam. وَإِمَانِهِ وَيَقِينِهِ كَأَنَّهُ يُشَاهِدُ And with the iman and the yaqeen as if he can see him. وَلِهَذَا لَمَّا سَأَلَ مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ صَلَىٰهُ وَسَلَامُ And for this fact, when Musa عَلَيْهِ صَلَىٰهُ وَسَلَامُ And I want you to contemplate this now. Because Musa عَلَيْهِ صَلَىٰهُ وَسَلَامُ is one of the best prophets and messengers. Period. He's one of the best prophets and messengers. One of the best human beings ever to walk the face of this planet. The One of the best. There's not a single person alive right now that is anywhere near Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And when Musa alayhi salatu wasalam asked to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he couldn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Musa, as Allah ta'ala informs us, qala, Rabbi Adini Andur Ilaik. He said, Oh my Lord, show me yourself so I can look upon you. For call Allah Ta'ala Lahu Lan Tarani. Allah Ta'ala told him he won't see me. Meaning where? In this dunya. Ya'ni fi dunya. You're not gonna see me in a dunya. Now if Musa alayhi sallallahu salam couldn't see Allah Ta'ala in his in, in, in this dunya, how in the world are some Sufi Shaykhs talking about he's seen Allah? How? If Musa alayhi sallallahu alayhi salam couldn't see Allah in the dunya. How in the world some Sufi Sheikh quote unquote gonna see Allah in the dunya? And expect us to believe that? We're not gonna believe that ever. Cause that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Hey. لا أحد يستطيع رؤية الله في هذه الدنيا لعظمته سبحانه وتعالى. No one in this dunya can see Allah سبحانه وتعالى. They don't have the ability. And this is because of Allah Ta'ala's greatness. Because Allah Ta'ala, He is uh, is a screen between Allah Ta'ala and His servants, between His slaves, and that screen is of light. As it comes in a hadith, hijabuhu nur. And, and, and the screen of Allah is nur, is light, is light. في هذه الدنيا so no one will see Allah in this دنيا وإنما دلت أدلة في الكتاب والسنة على أن المؤمنين يكرمهم الله يوم القيامة but it comes proofs and evidences in the book and the sunnah that the believers will be uh, honored in the next life they'll be honored يوم القيامة and be able to see Allah يوم القيامة فكما أنهم عبدوه just like they used to worship him, fi hadhi dunya in this world, 
من غير رؤية without seeing him من غير رؤية له without seeing him وإنما آمنوا به but rather they used to believe in him فإن الله يقر عيونهم بأن يتجلى لهم ويرونه so Allah Ta'ala he would give to their sight and, and, and honor their sight يوم القيامة so they'll be able to see him نعم عيانا بأبصارهم they'll be able to see Allah Ta'ala with their eyes with their eyes they'll be able to see Allah Ta'ala with their eyes يوم القيامة نعم وأما الكفار but the kufar on the other hand لما لم يؤمنوا بالله في هذه الدنيا فإن الله يحجبهم عن رؤيته يوم القيامة but the kufar because they didn't used to believe in Allah in the dunya then they will be prohibited from seeing Allah on the day of judgment they'll be prohibited from seeing Allah on the day of judgment as Allah Ta'ala he says كلا إنهم عن ربهم يوم إذا لمحجوبون but rather nay the evil doers on that day they will be veiled from seeing their Lord the evil doers on that day they will be veiled from seeing their Lord as it comes in Surah Al-Mutafifin verse 15 فإذا كان الكفار يحجبون عن الله في الآخرة فإن المؤمنون فإن المؤمنين يرون ربهم سبحانه وتعالى so since the kufar are not going to see Allah in the next life then by default then we understand what then the believers on the opposite will see Allah يوم القيامة نعم كما تواترت بهذه الأدلة أو بهذه الأدلة just like the the أدلة in this uh, in this issue that we will see Allah in the next life are many تواتر they reach the level of تواتر the well known well spread the shaykh he says كأنك ترى هذا الدليل على أنه لا يرى في الدنيا معاينة and his hadith right here is a proof so the Sufi come and say but shaykh so and so he see Allah he say lie it's a, it's, it's a lie and he say what's the proof he say because the prophet he said كأنك ترى as if you see him which is a proof that what that you not going to see him he's not going to be seen as if you see him as if you see him huh? so we understand from this as if you see him means that what that he's not going to be seen in the dunya so this right here is a proof that Allah is not going to be seen in his dunya with the eyes he said but rather it will be as if they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning with their hearts, with their, with their, with their, with their uh, certainty, with their iman, that of which is not mixed with any doubt. And this is the greatest level. This is the greatest level, the level of mushahada. It is the greatest, the greatest level. Naam. Wa ba'daha martabatun. And after that we have another martaba. And that is the martaba of muraqaba. Or where a person he's constantly aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sees him. Lakin Abtawakaf Huna inshaAllah ta'ala fanaktafi bihad al qadr wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.